first off, thrilled to, to have that opportunity. Um, I came in with a little bit of an attitude that, you know, like I had almost 10 years of nursing experience that, you know, I, what I wanted to do was was kind of refine my skill set in my mind. I'm like, you know, like I've done two nursing programs and what I'm going to take from, from the PA is I'm going to try to consolidate and really specialize. It, not to sound cliche, but you know, the drinking from a fire hose thing uh, was very evident very early on. It's, it's, it's a very fast paced curriculum and uh, surprisingly I, I learned so much more than I even expected. Um, it was challenging from the from the perspective of trying to work as well. I, I was somebody who was under the uh, illusion that I was going to be able to work part time and kind of you know fund some of my education, and that went away really quickly. And it was easy. Uh, it was easy to kind of relinquish work and, and and just fully focus on the program because I had a great time um, on a personal level. I had, I had a great batch of students that I worked with that I that I learned with. And we all really complemented each other very well. It was a great experience um, just being in that group. But wow, was it stressful. Um, the, the, the content is so fast paced. It's condensed medicine in, in one year of didactic experience and then on to uh, the clinical aspect. Drinking from a fire hose is a good analogy. So mm -hmm. what's involved exactly in second year PA school? Yeah, so second year we're, we're turned loose on the world, so to speak, and you know, you get this condensed uh, didactic medical uh, curriculum slammed at you for one year. You're also trying to figure out what you're going to do for your capstone project as well. You're preparing for exams after the first year and you're in, in clinical rotations at that point in year two. It's a lot of juggling now. You're, now you're essentially working a job while you're still in school. There's also obligations that you have while working on different uh, subspecialties during your clinical year, during your rotations. You're expected to present and lecture to uh, other medical learners, whether it's med students, other PA students, nursing students. And that's all part of kind of bringing together the, uh, the classroom aspect while at the same time learning how to function and develop your hands-on, your uh, CAN-MEDS competencies, becoming a communicator, developing interpersonal uh, relationships and just learning how to function in, in, in the real medical world. It's, it's, it's really challenging but it is a lot of fun and it's, it, sitting in a classroom for that long it's nice to actually get out there and say okay let's let's see what I've learned, let's see what I can do. Where, were you, where did you do your core rotations? What specialties? The PA program in Manitoba, uh, you know, there, there's a big push towards getting uh, physician assistants involved in primary care which is you know a, a huge need. So we did a lot of rotations, uh, our, our main rotations were in family medicine, uh, internal medicine, obstetrics, gynecology, uh, and as far as rotations for electives, I, you know, I'm, I'm biased towards surgery, it's what I, what I, what I grew up doing as a nurse, so I, I chose a lot of surgical, surgical subspecialties as, as my uh, core electives. Um, I had opportunity to do uh, rotations in cardiac sciences, uh, general surgery, which is where I currently work right now, and then also I, I, I did a rotation in uh, infectious diseases, um, which was a, a huge utility. Uh, when you're choosing your electives, I would recommend to anyone, don't necessarily just focus on what you want to do, but what is going to complement what you want to do, because uh, in clinical years, that is your, that's your chance to fail. Um, and by fail, I mean that's when you're, you're trying out things, when you're trying to consolidate your knowledge and uh, see what works, see what doesn't. It's a, it's a, safe, it's a safe environment to, to fail and try out new things and, and try to become the clinician you want to be. Where did you, uh, what were the geographic locations? Were you concentrated in Winnipeg or were there opportunities for rural? I can't speak for the uh, program currently, um, but there were rural, um, rural placements available. For myself, I stayed, um, I stayed mainly in Winnipeg as well. I did some some time in uh, Porge la Prairie, which is just I mean it's not I, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's rural. It's fairly fairly large enough town, but uh, I mean it is considered rural. And I I went out there because I had a family doc friend, and I would go out there and like almost extracurricular almost activity. Uh, I'll drive out um, usually on Fridays after my clinical rotations. Uh, during the second year of the PA program, I'd show up there and he'd be running the, uh, he'd be the only doc in the ER, so he was thrilled to have me there and I'll kind of tag along and kind of get a, a taste of rural medicine and, you know, it's, it's, it, there's a stark difference between practicing rurally in an, an emergency room versus a tertiary care facility like in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Other students elected to go, I believe, as far as Churchill, as far as placements in the U.S., I, I haven't seen anything like that, even as an elective student, I mean, our, our, our the way PAs are, are 
our structure and legislation around it, we don't have that portability to the U.S. at this time. But I believe some students did pursue uh, some clinical encounters in the U.S. Uh, myself, I stuck close to home uh, and uh, slowly, uh, short, uh, uh, not too far away on the fringes in Porters La Prairie. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. Um, at least early on in the program, you may have to kind of make those opportunities for yourself and be very proactive, and, which is what you should. There's a great opportunity in our, in our new profession right now to kind of push that and try to, try to get exposure and also let other people uh, throughout the province or throughout Canada or wherever you're going see what PAs can do. It's, it's, it's a great advocacy point actually, even though it may not seem as one. You graduated a few years ago, so mm -hmm. at the time, how did your class find jobs? Yeah, great question. Um, so I believe at the time, um, Ian Jones may disagree with me, but I, I, I recall that at the time, it was the last year I believe that we were kind of loosely guaranteed jobs. Um, upon graduation, we did have a list of jobs that were protected for newer, gra for, uh, newer graduates uh, once we were completed the program. And it wasn't limited to that. I mean, a lot of uh, students went and pursued, um, pursued jobs and actually, you know, developing their own positions, which is which is absolutely amazing. I see a lot of PAs doing that now. Um, advocated for it, you know, they're saying, you know, I want to work in pediatric neurology, but there's no pediatric neurology position. Well, how do I get there? Well, you you track down the physician, you create awareness of what PAs are, you do clinical rotations, you volunteer, you demonstrate your abilities. And it's amazing. I, I've never seen it in any other profession, but the jobs will will materialize with enough push. Um, for myself, I was fortunate. Uh, I, I, I had a lot of surgery positions, which is where the the big need is right now. I mean, the models seem to be uh, more robust and better demonstrated in, in surgical subspecialties, where PAs can pinch in when the surgeons are in the OR. And there are a lot of job opportunities at the Health Sciences Center, which is it's, it's like home to me. Um, there are a lot of job opportunities in surgery there, which is what I was geared towards, and um, had a pretty good, pretty good list of uh, locations to interview for and, and pick. And so, I, as far as the job scene goes right now, it's 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 a little bit different right now. And you know, without getting into the specifics, I mean, we all know there's funding model issues, um, uh, regulation of other provinces. So it's it's not as easy it seems. But I think the take-home message is if if you have an interest in a certain area and that's what you want to do. Um, go for it, push forward, advocate for yourself, advocate for the profession, and uh, try to carve out a little niche for yourself and for the profession in the future.